Hello, parents and teachers who may be watching. Welcome to Creating Math Ahas for Parents. I'm Dr. Sandy Atkins, Sandy. And as we are approaching the end of the school year, I thought we'd do something fun. Now, I happen to love geometry. So I thought we'd do something with geometry. Uh, I start, I'm starting with some circles. I've actually cut several different circles and I used um, a small plate to do this. You may want to cut out some circles yourself if you want to join me. Pause the video along the way with the steps. Now, as I said, I love geometry and I learned this technique that I'm going to share with you years and years ago. It was part of a program called Equals and Family Math. Some of you might have experienced family math nights at the schools that your children attend. But it's a way to get parents and children excited about math. And, and as I said, I love geometry and this is one of my favorite activities. So we're going to start with a circle. And one thing that we need is the center. And you may notice I don't have a center here because I just went around the edge of a plate and cut it out. Now, one thing that we know is we could fold this into two equal pieces. And this line segment we get is called the diameter, and we know the diameter goes through the center. The problem is the way I fold it at this point, there's lots of possibilities for me to put the center. It doesn't help me. See, it's folding it twice where the diameter intersects will be the center of the circle. So that's one thing that we want your children to understand is that the diameter goes through the center. If I fold it twice, where it intersects will be the center of the circle. I might have been off there from my angle, okay? These lines coming from the center out to the edge of the circle would be the radius. So we have radii and we have the diameter. Now for what we're going to do, I don't want these fold lines all the way across the circle. I need to find the center point, but instead of folding it in half, what I'm going to do is kind of start the fold in half and just pinch just about where I think the center is. You see how I pinched it right about where I thought the center was. And then I'm going to do it again in a little different direction. I'm gonna pinch about where I think the center is. And I should get an X marks the spot, okay? See it a little more clearly perhaps. Here is the first one, here's the second one. So right in the middle of that will be the center point for the circle. Now this is going to be important as we do this activity. What we're gonna do is we're going to take the edge of the circle, the arc, and we're gonna fold it right in towards the center point and make a nice fold. Now we can make uh, change the difficulty of this based on the language we look, work with. Now in this, this part of a circle is called a segment and this line segment going across is called the chord of the circle. Now for many children in elementary school, those are terms that we don't tend to look at yet but they will get in middle school and high school geometry. So that's the first fold. My second fold, I'm gonna take the arc of the circle and go to the center again. Notice I'm gonna also fold over top of what I've already done, that segment I've already done, but I wanna be really careful not to let this fold over. So what I do is I get that point pretty well and then just curve this around till it hits the center point. Now again, this would be called a segment of the circle. This line would be called a chord and you can see how I didn't let it fold that part over. I was very careful with that. Okay. Now, if I've been careful, ideally, when I take this arc and touch the center, I should be able to do it so that I don't fold these over on top of themselves. These stay very nice, crisp points. The segment is nice and crisp. I don't end up folding that over. Let's see how we did. And I should be able to hit that center point. Now, do you see how right now, 
I've got these three segments, three chords. And do you notice the shape that I formed in the center there? When this folds over, I go from a circular shape to a triangle. And the important thing when we do this with the children is to have them tell us what they notice and wonder. Now, one thing to notice about this triangle is it happens to be an equilateral triangle. I have this nice equilateral triangle sitting here, okay? Now, we're going to continue with this fold, and they can test. I could say, how could you check it? And you notice I don't have to check it with a ruler. I can figure out some other way to compare the edges to make sure that they're equals. I could make marks along the edge of paper and see if once I make those marks, when I turn it, does it fit in the same place? So there's a lot of exploration your children can do too. Now, what I'm going to do now is I want to find the midpoint of each of the sides of my equilateral triangle. And we're going to use that pinch fold again. Do you remember? So I'm gonna have the vertices touch, another terminology. And I'm just going to pinch. I'm not going to fold the triangle all the way in half. We're just going to pinch. There's a midpoint. I can do that for each of the sides of my triangle. So I'm going to fold, have the vertex to vertex touch, and do a pinch fold. All right? There's two of them. I'm going to do it on the third side also. You can see it start to kind of cave in. And what we're going to do is I'm going to take one vertex and fold it so it touches the opposite midpoint, the midpoint of the opposite side. Now, at this point, you can see I have a trapezoid. We can talk about what they notice about the trapezoid. We could name the legs of the trapezoid, the bases of the trapezoid. I could ask what fraction of the triangle is this piece? Now, when they look here, they may think it's one third, but when I open it up or I could draw the lines here, I see three triangles and this is the fourth. So this is one fourth of the whole shape. So we can do some fractions with it, okay? But I folded this to the midpoint of the opposite side. I can do that with this one. Let's do again. Fold it to the midpoint. Now, I didn't have to open it back up. I could have folded it on top. And once I fold it on top, what's the name of this shape? See, this is now a rhombus. Opposite sides are parallel. Opposite sides are congruent. That's something we talk about a little bit in the upper grades, more in middle school, high school. But your children in elementary can start to explore these. The key again is what do they notice and wonder. And I'm going to again fold this third vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. Okay, and now I have an equilateral triangle that's similar, proportional to the original equilateral triangle. And the nice thing is I'm gonna let these pop up. So we went from a circular shape to a 2D triangle shape, and now we have a 3D shape. This 3D shape, I'll hold it together here, has four equilateral triangles as its faces. This is called a tetrahedron, right? Hedron, three-dimensional shape, four faces. So now we go from talking about sides as we do on 2D to faces. So we have four triangular faces. We can look at the edges, right? The edges of our tetrahedron. So we've got faces, edges, and vertices. So we use terms like vertex with 2D shapes. We use terms like faces with 3D shapes, edges with 3D shapes, sides with 2D shapes.
So we took our triangle, we went from a circle to an equilateral triangle to a tetrahedron, okay? So that in itself is pretty cool and fun. And think of all the geometry we've already talked about. We've looked at some 2D shapes, circle, triangle, equilateral triangle, trapezoid, rhombus, and then a triangle again. We can talk about similar shapes, proportional, things that shrink down in a certain way or increase. We have that 3D and all of its vocabulary, but we're gonna make one more shape while we're doing this. Let's open it back up. And this time, instead of taking this vertex to the opposite, midpoint of the opposite side, we're going to go to the center point. Now again, if I look at this shape, we can talk about what this shape is, or I turn it this way. So we have a trapezoid again. We can talk about its legs and its bases. Lots of vocabulary. I could ask again, what fraction of the large triangle is this little piece? And I'm gonna hold that question and let you see in a bit, okay? Now, like before, I'm gonna take the next vertex and fold it in to touch that midpoint. Now at this point, how many sides does our 2D shape have, right? So I've got one, two, three, four, five. This is a pentagon. It's not a typical pentagon that we see. It's not regular. The side lengths are not the same, but we have a pentagon there, okay? And we might be getting closer to determining what fraction of the whole thing one of these little triangles is. Now, can you predict what the next shape will be, what the shape will end up when I put this vertex to the center? See, at this point, when I put the vertex to the center, I end up with a regular, equal sides, equal angles, a regular hexagon, okay? So this is a regular hexagon. If you can envision drawing the lines, you can see in here, I have six of these little triangles and then three more of them. Ponder what you think the fraction, the one little piece will be. Now, now that we're here, Notice how this kind of is popping up. I have these little equilateral triangles that are similar to the base, this equilateral triangle. I'm going to take and squeeze these together. And you see now I have three faces that are trapezoids. I have opposite faces are triangular. This would be called a truncated, we cut it off, truncated tetrahedron. It's fun, this can become a box that you can store things in, they can decorate it. It's something that's just kind of fun to be able to go from a circle to a 3D shape. And there's so much geometry and vocabulary along the way. I hope that helps. Again, try making them yourself. Pause the video as you go. The key thing when you do any of these types of activities, even if it's origami or any other paper folding activities, the thing to ask your child as they're going is what do they notice and what do they wonder? Of course, sometimes it's important to just let them play and explore and make fun shapes, but it's also nice to pause periodically, notice, wonder, and predict of what could come next. If you have found this video helpful, you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to the channel. It's free. It's greatly appreciated. It helps with the YouTube algorithms or whatever it is to help get these videos out to others. So again, if you'd consider um, subscribing, that would be great. Um, also click on that notification bell so you know when other videos will become available. I do try to post on Tuesday afternoons each Tuesday, and I'm also always looking for other topics for these videos. So if you have ideas, please write them in the comments below. That would also be greatly appreciated. Thanks so much for watching.